I'm Mary Garrett. I'm here with Andrew Harrington to discuss the use or disclosure of information in the Executive Branch Ethics Act. Andy, does the duty not to use or disclose information apply only to information that is confidential by law? No, this rule has two parts. Um, one is limited to information that is confidential by law, and it's pretty simple. Current and former employees cannot use or disclose without appropriate authorization information that is confidential by law. Mm -hmm. Do you have examples of information that is confidential by law? The information that's protected by FERPA, student records that are protected by FERPA, would be one obvious example. It may also include certain employee records. Um, basically, if there's a law that says the university has a duty to keep information confidential, then all of us as employees have an ethical as well as a legal duty to keep that information confidential. So what's the second part? Well, the second part is a little more involved. Even if the information is not confidential by law, if it is information that we got through our official duties, and if that information could in any way result in a benefit for myself or any of my immediate family members, then we cannot use or disclose that information if the information has not been disseminated to the public. Mm, okay. Does benefit mean financial benefit? No, it's not limited to financial benefit. It means anything that is to a person's advantage or self-interest or from which a person profits regardless of the financial gain. So it includes financial benefits, but it also includes uh, service, privilege, exemption, patronage, advantage, advancement, or really anything of value. How far does the immediate family member group extend? Well, my spouse or domestic partner uh, child or children, including stepchildren or adopted children, parent, sibling, grandparents, aunts and uncles, and my father-in-law, mother-in-law, or sibling-in-law. Um, so if I, as a UA employee, have any information that could benefit somebody in that group, in that circle, in that scope, then I have to keep quiet. Or if that person, as a UA employee, has information that might benefit me, then they can't share that information with me either. If I know somebody that is outside the university who has learned the information, does that count as being publicly disseminated? No, the state regulations have a, a specific list of things that have to be met in order for information to be regarded as being publicly disseminated. And here I have to look at my cheat sheet. Um, if it has been distributed through a newspaper or other printed publication, through broadcast media, a press release, a newsletter, a legal notice, a non-confidential court filing, a published report, a UA website, posting on the Alaska online public notice system, a public speech, or public testimony before the legislature or an agency. Now, information that has not gone public through one of those channels, even though it may have to be produced in response to a public records request, or it may have otherwise uh, gotten into the hands of somebody who's in the general public. It has not been disseminated to the public, so we should not disclose or use it if it might benefit ourselves or our immediate family members. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. Who do we report to you if we suspect that someone has shared protected information, and what are the consequences? Well, it should be reported to the ethics supervisor for the particular unit of the university for which you're working. Um, and those are listed on the ethics website for the general counsel's office. It may also have to be reported someplace else uh, if it entails a crime or a Title IX violation or something like that. The place to start would be the ethics supervisors. And the consequences would be follow the same progressive discipline approach that any other violation of policy would for an employee. Mm -hmm. After we stop working for the university, are we released from these obligations? No. These requirements regarding the information uh, apply to current and former employees. Most provisions of the Executive Branch Ethics Act uh, stop being applicable to us when we stop working for the university. Um, but these particular provisions apply to former employees. So uh, even leaving university service, you still have these obligations to keep that information confidential. Thanks everyone for your time and for joining us for this compliance chat. If you have ideas for future compliance chats, please email them to ua-compliance at alaska.edu.